Good day to Dinarans on the go and in the know. October 25, 2019. No hype, no BS, just the facts. Hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next post. I encourage you, knowledge is power. Stay informed and stay alert, and know that today, we are one day closer than yesterday. First article of interest. Iraq protests. 21 dead as police fire live rounds and tear gas in fresh wave of unrest. Most deaths occurred after protesters hit in the face by tear gas canisters and rubber bullets, officials say. At least 21 people have been killed in Iraq as police fired live rounds, rubber bullets and tear gas during a fresh wave of anti-government protests. Dozens more were also injured as the demonstrations resumed on Friday after a three-week hiatus, security officials said. Thousands of people began converging at Baghdad's central Tahrir Square early in the day. The demonstrators, mostly young, unemployed men, carried Iraqi flags and chanted anti-government protests, demanding jobs, water and electricity. Security forces and government officials had vowed to avoid further deadly violence ahead of the protests and deployed heavily on the streets of Baghdad in anticipation. However, soldiers fired tear gas to disperse the crowds after thousands of protesters removed metal security barriers and crossed a bridge leading to Baghdad heavily fortified Green Zone, home to the U.S. Embassy and Iraqi government offices. Live rounds were then fired to push the protesters back after they tried to remove concrete barriers near the entrance to the green zone. Security and hospital officials said eight people were killed, five of them in Baghdad and three in the southern province of Nazaria. They said most of the deaths occurred as protesters were struck in the face by tear gas canisters and rubber bullets. Hundreds of people were taken to hospitals, many with shortness of breath from the tear gas. Elsewhere on Friday at least 3,000 protesters broke into the provincial government building in the southern Iraqi city of Nazaria and set it on fire, according to police sources. Six protesters were wounded in the southern city of Amara in Mysin province, when guards protecting the local office of Shiti militia group Asab al-Alak opened fire, two security sources said. Next article of interest. At least 27 killed as fresh anti-government protest in Gulf Iraq. Unrest breaks nearly two years of relative Iraq stability. By Reuters, October 25, 2019, 2137, demonstrators take part in a protest over corruption, lack of jobs, and poor services. In Najaf, Iraq, October 25, 2019, photo credit, ALAAL Marjani Reuters, October 25, 2019, Baghdad. At least 25 protesters were killed in Iraq on Friday when security forces used tear gas and an Iranian-backed militia opened fire to try to quell renewed demonstrations against corruption and economic hardship, security sources said. A government intelligence officer and a member of the powerful Asab al-Alak militia were killed in a clash with protesters in the southern city of Amara, police sources said. Nearly 1,800 people were injured nationwide, according to medical sources. As demonstrators vented frustration at political elites they say have failed to improve their lives after years of conflict, all we want are four things, jobs, water, electricity, and safety. That's all we want, said 16-year-old Ali Mohammed who had covered his face with a t-shirt to avoid inhaling tear gas, as chaotic scenes overwhelmed Baghdad's central Tahrir Square. Sirens wailed and tear gas canisters landed amid groups of young protesters draped in Iraqi flags and chanting with life and blood we defend you Iraq. The bloodshed is a second major bout of violence this month. A series of clashes two weeks ago between protesters and security forces left 157 people dead and over 6,000 wounded. The unrest has broken nearly two years of relative stability in Iraq, which lived through foreign occupation civil war and an Islamic State IS insurgency between 2003 and 2017. It is the biggest challenge to security since IS was declared beaten. On Friday, eight protesters were killed in Baghdad, the Iraqi Human Rights Commission said. At least five of them were protesters struck by tear gas canisters, security sources said. In the south, at least six protesters were killed when members of the Iranian-backed Asab al-Alaq AAH militia opened fire on protesters who tried to set fire to the group's office in the city of Nazaria, according to security sources. Eight people were killed in Amara city, including six protesters, one AAH member and one intelligence officer, police sources said. 
Three protesters were killed in oil-rich Basra and one in Samoa, security sources said. Interior Ministry spokesman Khalid al Mahana said at least 68 members of the security forces were injured. The sometimes violent demonstrations erupted in Baghdad on October 1 and spread to southern cities. They posed the biggest challenge to Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi since he took office just a year ago. Despite promising reforms and ordering a broad cabinet reshuffle, he has so far struggled to address the protesters' discontent, poverty, despite oil wealth. Despite the OPEC member country's vast oil wealth, many Iraqis live in poverty, have limited access to clean water, electricity, basic health care or decent education as the country tries to recover from years of conflict and economic hardship. Many Iraqis view the elite as subservient to one or other of Iraq's two main allies, the United States and Iran. Many suspect these powers use Iraq to pursue their struggle for regional influence via proxies unconcerned with ordinary people's needs. They hit us last night and again this morning. We don't have any demands anymore. We want the government toppled, said demonstrator Salah Mohammed. We want Iran to take its parties and leave, America to take its parties and leave, and let the Iraqi people decide. In Basra, Reuters footage showed protesters clashing with security forces who launched tear gas canisters and stun grenades and were met by rocks thrown at their vehicles. Young men carried the injured away, as protesters set police cars on fire. An 8 p.m. curfew was imposed until further notice in the southern provinces of Basra, Mathana, Wasit, Babel and Dikar, after protesters torched offices of lawmakers. Shi'ite political parties and militia headquarters. How the government and security forces handled Friday's planned protest had been seen as a litmus test for the stability of the country with political leaders already on edge. Rage against the elite. In a Thursday night address, Abdul Mahdi stressed that violence would not be tolerated and warned that any collapse of the government would drag Iraq into further turmoil. Iraq's top Shi'ite cleric, Grand Ayatollah Ali al Sistani, who in recent weeks criticized the government's handling of the protests, urged calm on all sides during his sermon on Friday. In Baghdad, many demonstrators initially believed authorities would refrain from violence after security forces killed dozens of protesters earlier this month. Hundreds tried throughout the day to march into the city's fortified green zone, which houses government buildings and foreign embassies, when they were stopped by security forces. By afternoon, the mood had shifted with thousands of angry protesters wrapped in Iraqi flags under pouring rain, chanting that they were peaceful and calling political leaders corrupt. As clashes broke out, two tuks carried the injured to hospitals. Medical sources told Reuters hundreds of people had been treated for injuries, most related to terror gas exposure. More articles of interest to come. Hit that subscribe button and the alert bell so you don't miss my next post. I encourage you. Knowledge is power. Stay informed and stay alert. Over and out for now, the Dinarian. The coffins of two more of the victims of this bloody week were taken this afternoon for burial. More than a hundred are confirmed to have died in the five days of protests. But charities and human rights agencies say the actual figure is higher and thousands have been injured. The streets in Baghdad and elsewhere had been quieter today just the mess left behind after moments of serious disorder and violence. Tonight, though, there has been more like this. The security forces, police and the army have been firing live rounds at protesters, as well as volleys of tear gas. Snipers have also been seen, apparently to take out individual protesters. Some of them have slingshots, but most seem only to be carrying their country's flag. The protesters have been driven by a profound sense of hopelessness. The people on the streets are young, educated, and they're fed up of having a complete lack of any prospects. I have a master's degree, but the government would not even hire me as a street sweeper. All these young people are treated unfairly. It does sound like the government might be listening. The Prime Minister tonight striking what is, at face value at least, conciliatory. I am ready to go wherever our brotherly protesters are stationed and meet them or send them envoys to other locations in other provinces without any armed forces. I will go and meet them without weapons and sit with them for hours to listen to their demands.
The internet was cut but is working now, though social media is not reliable. An attempt by the authorities to prevent the protesters from communicating and coordinating. And some private TV stations were taken offline too by unidentified masked men. The government hasn't explained why it apparently ordered its agents to do this. We have not forged reality. We transmitted the truth as it is. It seems that this state cannot bear the truth. I hoped that the Premier would announce his stance, but he was silent towards what happened. Sixty percent of Iraq's population is under 25. They're calling simply for their country to function, for basic services to work, for government accountability and an end to corruption. It is 16 years since a Western coalition ousted Saddam Hussein. Since then, Iraq has been framed by waves of violence. They fought foreign powers, each other, the Islamic State, and now the young here just want a viable future. Mark Stone, Sky News.